guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome to a preview and predicted lineup show. Republic of Ireland taking on Qatar on Tuesday night. Not quite a qualifier, but still an important game. Uh, Daz, Ireland obviously off the back of a brilliant 3 0 win, to be honest, in Azerbaijan. I think we we're, when I say we we're all delighted with that, uh, everyone here was delighted with that anyway. I still saw a few people who wanted to moan and the usual stuff, you know, yourself. But uh, look, I thought it was an excellent performance. I gave my reaction, uh, excellent result, first of all, but the performance is good as well. But before we get into Qatar and predicted lineups and all that, what did you make of the overall performance against Azerbaijan? Well, I think, first of all, absolutely fair play to any of the Irish fans that went out there. Mm. They were certainly heard on TV back here. There were, you know, there were chants of going around the stadium. Absolutely excellent to see and fair play to anyone who went out there or anyone who's living out there that went to the match. That was brilliant, you know. A huge, huge stadium. I, know, I think there's only like 6,000 in it. Um, obviously, mm. physical unrest, I think, is the reason for that. But there you go, there you have it. But still, 200, I think 250 Irish fans met out there. So fair play to each and every one of them. Absolutely brilliant to see. Um, look, 3-0 win, three goals, a clean sheet. Um, you know, it's a monkey off the bat for Stephen Kenny in a way too. He's got his first competitive win. It's been coming. Uh, he needed it. He certainly needed it against Azerbaijan. I think if a, he had got a draw, I don't know what way we would, I don't know what we would talk about after this. Um, I didn't really see anything else other than a win. Um, I was sure we were going to get a win. I think a lot of people were sure that it was going to be a win. Um, I'm happy that you know the team, for the most part, did play very well. Everyone did. I think everyone had a good game. Um, especially players who's been getting a bit of stick lately, likes of Henrik and all. You know, they kind of put themselves back in an Ireland shirt, you know, in a good way. But you know, I think it's important to remember too. It was against Azerbaijan. They were expected to win, but didn't do that last time. Last time was a draw, which is a bit mad. But um. They got to win, um, three good goals. Um, obviously Robson had a great game, probably his best in an early shirt so far. He's got, you know, he got a good few goals in his belt. Maybe could have had a few more. His shot from his left foot was absolutely terrific. It was you know, rippled the back of the net. And there was some power behind that. Like that was just brilliant to see. And I do think the one that came from the corner, I think their goalie should have done an awful oh, lot yeah. better. But I am not going to really criticise the players. They got the job done. They scored the goals. You can only play what's in front of you. And we put up to Azerbaijan and, you know, we kind of came away with three points and three goals. And I'm, and I'm delighted about it. And if you have to win ugly, you have to win ugly. But it was good football. We did play well. Um, I think it was interesting to see Stephen Kenny line up with originally three at the back. But obviously, you know, that formation really fluctuated throughout the match. And he definitely changed it up during the match too. And, um, McLean had a few bursts of runs of far, which was good to see. You know, he, he met he met a few runs like he did, like he was doing to about ten years ago, which <laughs> which was really good to see. Um, I think you know it was great to see the other younger players come into the team, like Omar Bamadeli was keeping his place in the team, Bazunu keeping his place. That was all really really good to see in a competitive game. I know it was against Azerbaijan, but as I said, you can only play with who was in front of you. Um, I actually thought Cullen had a very good game as well. He he dropped in deep, he collected the ball and he has a very good engine on him and I think that goes a bit unnoticed at times but it's certainly something that we need in the team going forward. So, look, I was delighted with the three points. I was delighted when everybody was and he was definitely coming and I hope now we can build on this and, you know, he can't, you know, he's starting to identify how we're going to play now and it's starting to work but, you know, I don't want to be starting talking negative now. There's no need to be doing that. But, you know, just, I think Azerbaijan did have a lot of the ball too at times. They had a lot of passes, they had a lot of possession too. And, you know, if that had been a different level of opposition, a different goalie, it might have been the same story. So, you know, that's a bit of worrying to look at it that way too. But overall, we did very well. As I said, we got the three points, we got the three goals. We were disciplined. We were professional. It was a good performance all around by everyone. And it was great to see the players get minutes on the pitch and do well. And, you know, Bazunu hadn't got too much to do, but he had a good game as well. He did everything he was supposed to do as well, which was, I think it's important to mention as well going forward. So, yeah, look, I'm delighted with it and bring on Qatar now. Yeah, obviously going into the Qatar game now as well, we'll go through the 11. But um, for Sars, was what, would you go with the same formation? He kind of played a 3 2 2. 2-1 formation against um, I know you'd want to get that right wouldn't you against Azerbaijan <laughs> do you think he'll change it up slightly? I think he will I think he has to um, it's a friendly against Qatar I know you need to go out and try and win every game yes of course you do but it is a friendly um, I do think it's important to change up how we play every now and again especially in the friendly when you can obviously before these friendlies we had the Nation League which were not friendlies they were competitive to a degree um, 
you know, if you had to qualify, if you had to go in your group round, you basically qualify it. So you definitely are competitive. There's no room for real change in the team around them. You need to be going out, making sure you would at the very least are solid in the back you're not know, taking risks and you're probably going to get a draw the worst but that's why I think you can't really experiment too much in them games but these are the games now where you can give the likes of Travers a half if you want you can give the likes of other players in the team minutes on the pitch you can change it up you can go with two up top if you want you can go with four in the back you can go with two wingers playing with a striker you can go with attacking midfielders I think you know playing the likes of Qatar it's important to change it up and for that reason I would change it up. And I think he should go with a flat forward back. Um, Obviously, Ireland has played the last, you could say, 20, 30 years with a flat forward back. And I do think it is reliable. Everybody knows the job. Um, Obviously, that can change in the game. You can have overlapping fullbacks. You can have inverted fullbacks. You can have, you know, you can change it up in the game. But I do think he should, I would like to see him go with a back four in this game. Not negatively. And the formation I'd be hoping he'd go with is 4-3-3. Three, three. Which is something that he, you know he has played with. And we that know is he has. For his known formation, actually, yeah. Yeah, so I would hope he would play with that formation against Qatar and have it change up a bit because you know if you're you know going forward if, if something's not working in the game, which is I think something Stephen Kenny's kind of failed on, is being able to change formations and stuff in the game and have it affect the game in a positive way. I think he hasn't really done that. Um, if it's going to hammer him or something, that's something I would be looking at. I think that he could. You know, try and adapt to his management style as in knowing when to change it up and what players he can put in where to change it up. So that's why I'd, go, I'd be going with a 4 3 3 uh, myself. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Like, it'd be interesting to see what actual selection you'll go to because I, I'd be of the opinion of, yeah, we need to see changes because you need to try players, but I don't want to see sweeping changes. I don't want to see 11 different players out of the pitch because I think you need a little bit of momentum at the same time. So maybe some changes with four or five, if possible, that starts, just, let's say, against Azerbaijan, irrespective of system or formation. So it'll be interesting to see what you go, actually. Who are you going in gold, to be fair? Firstly, Key, I completely agree with you. I don't want to see a completely new 11. There's absolutely no... I think it's wasted. You're wasting the whole situation yeah. if you do that. I think it's pointless. Definitely, and it'd be great to go against Qatar and get another good win under your belt. And you know, you're pushing then for another few weeks to go against the next. I know we've got Portugal up next and stuff like that after this, but it'd be great, you know, coming away in this national window with two wins, something we haven't done under Stephen Kenny. I haven't done in a very long time, so that'd be brilliant. Obviously, we should be going out to win every game, but that would be absolutely excellent. And for that reason, I also would be making wholesale changes for myself going goals. I will be starting with Bazunu, but I would. Like to see Travers get a half. I'd like to see him get the second half. You know, he is flying high in a championship. He is keeping clean sheets. He is at the upper end of the championship. Could be a Premier League player next season. And I hope he is. And I hope he, you know, if Barma do go up, that he is starting next season for them. But, you know, he feel hard done by but not getting in. But Presuno has obviously cemented his place in and should not be changed, in my opinion. You know, he's doing so well. It wouldn't make sense to just show him out, like, you know, and put someone else in unless you're going to give him a half each. Which is what I hope he does because there's nothing to say with Zunu and hopefully it doesn't happen, gets injured and can't play again for for a while. Mm. Really hope that doesn't happen. But we have to be prepared for if Bazunu's sick, if he gets injured, if he can't play, if he's sent off. You know, we need to know our goalies are there. Um Travers should, you know, I think he deserves to get a half in that match. So I would be starting with Bazuni, but I would like to see Travers come on in the second half, irrespective of the scoreline. If winning or losing or draw, I'd like to see him come on and get a half. But yeah, I would be going with Bazunu and goals myself anyway. Ironically, I probably would change the goalkeeper for this after after my comments there as well. Yeah, no, the reasons are what you said there. The goalkeeper you see is a delicate position, and Bazunu has obviously been been doing brilliant, and we know what to expect from Gavin in the last uh, number of internationals. With Travers, we don't really with Kelleher, we don't really either. So I think maybe for this game, I think he probably will actually, respect of my opinion. I think he probably will go with Travers and Kelleher a half each type situation, I think, because I think you look at that and say, look, I've got two good goalkeepers here. I do get, need to give them a little bit of game time as well. Now, he might change the back four or back five an awful lot in that respect, but um, it's a tough one as well because Kelleher could come in for a half, potentially. Travers could come in for a half, potentially, and they might have nothing to do, potentially. Qatar, I seen them the other day against Portugal. They had nothing in the match. I know Portugal are better than Ireland, but even so, I don't expect Qatar to create too many chances against Ireland, if I'm honest with you. I certainly hope not, but <laughs> sure. a few months ago, that was a different story, but we won't talk about that, but I certainly hope you're right with that one. Um, obviously, going in into the backs, 
with the right back situation, you know, I'll be hoping Coleman's back for the next window. I think he will be back. Hopefully he is back. Um, but you know, or the only other like out and out right back was Christy. And for me, he doesn't really warrant a starting position in there. I think that already that he's done well. I'd be keeping him a right back. I think he deserves to be right back and, you know, get a bit of solidarity back there, you know, and keep familiar places in the team if you can. So I'd be going with Doherty anyway myself. I mean, if you look at the alternative to Doherty, Daz, it's Christy. And to be honest, we know what he can do. And let's be honest, it's not very good. So um, <laughs> honestly, if he was a young right back coming through, like Omar Bamadele, as in if he was a right back, let's say, um, you might give him a game in that situation. But no, I think we need couple of players that are familiar to play as well. So I'd probably agree with Doherty there. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think going with the centre-backs then, um, obviously left side of the centre-back, right side of the centre-back. Unfortunately, you know, I, I'm going, obviously going with a back four. I've left I'm a Bamadele out as much as I love him. I think he's a terrific player. Um, I think going with experience, this is key. If you're going to have, a, a, you know, a centre-back partnership, something that... We haven't really had too much of since the O'Shea eras and all, and we haven't had two centre backs consecutively starting with each other that are solid together in the backs. We have to do, we've been doing an awful lot of you know chopping and changing the last two or three years, but I think obviously you know we're getting old a little bit, but um, Egan and Duffy will be around for a while, yes, and I think they're both they're doing very well. Defenders, they usually last longer as well, and they're, they're both doing very well at club mm. level, like they're doing absolutely excellent. They're one few Irish players that's doing very, very well. Like, you know, picking up man in the match awards, Duffy's getting in with the goals, they're both starting at their clubs. You know, what more could you want? Like, you know, they're both doing very, very well. And for them reasons, I put them both in, they're both dependable, they know each other inside out, they're very, very good defenders, in my um, opinion. You know, they're danger at a set piece for us, and you know, we've had score an awful lot of goals from set pieces. So, I've went with them pairing in the backs, they're solid, they're dependable, and reliable. And that's what you want going in any game, you know, dependable, reliable, solid. So, I've went with them in the backs. And um, what I again, I'd like to see you know, Amabama Bamadelli come in because if Duffy O'Egan, you know, can't play in the next qualifiers, what's you're going to have, you know? But Amabama Bamadelli is doing very well with Ireland, and I'd like to see him evolve. But, I know. Any chance Nathan Col- he goes with Nathan Collins at any point? Do you think? Be very interesting to see. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it is a friendly, but then again, like you know, I like to start strong yeah, and maybe same. bring his last on. You know, that's how I've liked the yeah. Porch games rather than changing it all up and you know messing the team up a little bit. But I certainly want to rule Collins out. I think he's a very good defender, and obviously, you know, he's he's got a few. He's been getting game in time in the Premier League. I think he got one game there before international window. One full game, he can come off as well, which is good to see. He's obviously a very good centre back coming up. We're blessed in that department, thank God. But um, um, yeah, I'd I'd be like to see either of them come on, please, lads, either. But um, you know, for, four very good defenders that we have there. I would like to see Omar Bamadeli get a move maybe in January, get some game time. He can't play a championship level, I think, but he certainly needs to get game time if he wants to keep you know pushing on. I've seen the likes of Bazinu go out and get game time and that what a player he's tra- transforming into. It just shows it can be done, but hopefully he does that. But yeah, he can adopt his way went. Um with for left back then. Obviously, you know McLean acted as a left back, left wing back, left centre midfielder in that game. Stephen Kenny went through a few changes in that game. But um look, I've went with Stevens. Um, you know, he's been dependable for Ireland. We don't really have another left sided defender in the team. As of such, you know, I know O'Shea's fed there at times, but he's not in the squad, obviously. McLean was listed in the defenders as far as I know. So I wouldn't be don't be surprised if he does play a left back. But I went with Stevens. Stephen Kenny has said in his press conference that you know he, he, Stevens is only really back and he wants him to get more game time. So he might actually go with him. Um obviously he mightn't even go back back forward, but if it was me, I'd be picking Stevens. I think he's a good player. He's experienced. We all know what he can do. He's dependable, reliable, and I think so. We want him the team, like I said. So I want Stevens there. Yeah, and you see, if Stevens comes in, it's not like you're bringing in a new player. This guy has played with this Irish team. He's played with Egan at Sheffield United. He's played at left back. He's played left wing back at club and country level as well. So it's not as if, like, I agree with you there. I wouldn't make many changes in the back line. If he, even if he goes three at the back, I probably would go the same three to play the weekend. Let's say, and the only changes I would probably make are Stevens coming in which doesn't really change a lot because he's used to playing with those players in that system and maybe the goalkeeper playing with those defenders. You see what I mean? Um, so I think you have to, he has to lay maybe a little bit of a foundation at least. I think in these situations, if you're going to make changes, 
more so midfield and maybe in forward areas. But yeah, I'd agree with that as well. So midfield, you're going for three man midfield, aren't you? In the center. Yeah, three man midfield. So the number number six at holding midfielder. Um, I went with Cullen. I think he slots in very well, and now he's got a good engine on him. He can get up and down the pitch very, very well. You know, he's got good legs in him. He can make, he can cover lots of ground. Um, I think he's doing done ever so well for Ireland. You know, he's done a lot of the dirty work that just go talked about. He's, you know, he drops in to the centre backs. He collects the ball. He can drop in deep when we our possession. He can push on far when we get the ball. Um, I think he's done very well with Ireland since he's come in. Um, I do like him a lot as a player, and he's obviously getting game time at Anderlecht. So he is one of a few players that's playing very regularly. Um, obviously, I, I like to pick players that are playing at the club level. Um, yeah, if possible, yeah. Yeah, if possible. Like, I know the likes of Darty, Amabama Dele, all these lads aren't actually getting game time, but what can you do? You know, that they're the pool of players that we have, and they're at, at current, as I said, Darty is the best right back currently in this team, so you can't really leave him out. You have to pick him. In my opinion, I think anyway. But I went with Cullen there. Um, I wouldn't be making any, as I said, too many old and changes. We only had six centre midfielders, I think, anyway. So it's not like he could make loads of changes anyway. But I went with Cullen there. As I said, I think he's done very well. I wouldn't leave him out. Yeah, midfielder number two. Yeah, I went with Hurahin. Um, Hurahin, Hurahin. Um, look, set piece delivery, second and on. He's very good. One of the left foot. Um, obviously didn't really get involved in the last game. I think he will be involved in this game. Um, you know, the one corner we got the other night, we actually got a goal from it. I think it was the only corner we got in the game. It shows how important they are. So, you know, we get them kind of set pieces you need to have a good set piece delivery. Obviously, having the like not having likes of you know Robbie Brady in the team and all we're kind of down the set piece taker that you know most dependable will you know six, seven times out of ten is going to put a good ball in. And then when you've got tall players like Egan Duffy, you're going to want someone in there. You know, they're going to be looking for someone that can deliver a good ball in and be able to pick them out. Um, but no, but not even for them reasons. I just think Oren's a good player. Like, he's a good style of centre midfielder. And, you know, I'd like to see him get involved in this game because, you know, going forward, we're going to need players like him that'll be able to step up and actually play. Like, you know, because he is experienced and we need experienced players in the team. But I'd like to see him evolve and I'd like to see him start. So hopefully he does. And I've won with him. What else are you going for? Jamie McGrath. Um, I don't think he's done himself any harm the last few times he's played. Um, he's obviously doing very well, you know, since he stays in Lever, and I think he's come on an awful lot as a player, and a lot of people are talking about him now, and they're seeing what kind of a player he is. He's a very good attacking player. He's very good on the ball. He's very technical, and I think that's Stephen Kenny's way of playing. And you know, if you're going to try and keep the ball on the ground and pass it around as much as you can. Jamie McGrath is a very good man of picking out a player going forward and putting them little pin pot, you know, kind of passes in together and just kind of making that all together. You know, you've got Cullen behind and then it'll be able to pick the ball up and you've got McGrath, you'll be able to put a good few passing balls going forward and over him. It's very good at, you know, picking out a long pass or doing, you know, wayward passes, sideward passes and, you know, trying to hit, get the wingers on the ball. Um, I think you complement them players very well. So I went with McGrath, I think he's a good player. I'd like to see him involved. Yeah, I thought he did very well when he came on for Horgan the other day. I thought Horgan was the one negative, actually. I thought he, he was awful in the first half, so it was no surprise yeah. for me to see him come off. But McGrath kind of, uh, he was doing things very simply, but he just head up, finding people in good areas, edge of the box and things like that. And something Horgan wasn't doing, to be honest with you. He was, you know, he was trying, but he, he was playing in such a way that uh, just a lot of basic stuff he was doing wrong, which can be very frustrating. Uh, but... McGrath came on and tidied that up a little bit and, um, you know, Ireland created a lot more chances actually in the second half despite only scoring one goal and McGrath was um, one of the leading lights in that as well, I have to say, good ball carrier as well, which is another thing as well. So, yeah, that midfield is good. There's a possibility he goes with Knight as well. It depends what his sickness is like, etc. Um, I don't really know, like, you know what I mean? But there's a possibility he goes with him or at least certainly gives him some game time, I think. Yeah, I'll actually, like, I would like to see Knight, you know, come on. Um, In the last starting show, I had Knight starting, you know, in that game. Obviously, he didn't really get involved. You know, but, um, Ill, like, we didn't know he was ill at the time, like, you know. Yeah, we didn't, like, but I would, you know, if he is fit and able to play, I would certainly be involved and get some game time because he is hopefully going to be one of our shining lights in the future. I'm going to be, you know, hopefully gets an awful lot of caps under his career. And he, I hope he goes strength to strength. He's a terrific young player and he's very, very young. And he's very good. And he's very rounded for his age, which is absolutely excellent to see. So 
hopefully he gets some game time anyway against Qatar. But I don't see McGrath start this one. I think he deserves it, especially after his form here tonight, like you said. Yeah, I think so as well. Uh, the forwards, are you going with two wingers as a striker or are you going with two number 10 type players or what way are you doing it here? Two PSC wingers is what I'm going with. So the first one I went with is um, Ogbene. I think, you know, his last few Ireland appearances have been very brief, but he's got a goal each time. He's, you know, he came on head up, running at defenders, taking them on, mm. using his strength and power, something that we've missed and haven't had, you know. He's very and direct, I, isn't he? Very direct. Yeah. And he, he just runs at players, yeah. you know, and if you have someone that runs at them and can beat them with pace and get him behind, you're going, you're going to cause, you're going to cause problems for an opposition defence, like, you know, and I just thought, you know, the last few cameo appearances, yeah. that, like, He's shown his sheer desire for, for Ireland that he wants to play, he wants to do well. And, you know, I think he just deserves to get his chance to get, get a start of the game, you know. And I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if, if he was to start, if he could pop up with another goal or assist another goal. And obviously, we know him from his League of Ireland days. I, I never thought he'd be, you know, actually in the Ireland squad, um, you know, properly, as in like at this soon. Like, you know, I'm very happy that's happened for him. I think he's a smashing young player. And, you know, like he's just a very good winger, like sheer pace. Like, you know, he's definitely our fastest player, I think, anyway. Um, just absolute sheer pace. And I would love to see him start. I think he'd be a great addition to the front line. I think he deserves that. But I certainly have him starting myself anyway against Qatar. Yeah, I think Stephen Kenny needs to have a look at him from the start as well because he's had a few cameo appearances. So this is an opportunity for him to actually start. And uh, Kenny does like kind of them type of wingers as well. He's always played byline, direct, fast, pacey wingers. So he's down his alley, if you know what I mean, as well. Have you gone the other wing? Um, I put Robinson on the other wing. Um, you know, he has, he obviously, he started there for Ireland, kind of, you know, he just sit into the middle then, kind of, throughout the game. But it's very fluid, but they're all moving around, aren't they? That's yeah, they're all moving around. Like, you know, for West Brom, he has played a lot on the wing too, so he, he can't play on the wing. Obviously, you know, you're never going to drop your informed striker. Look at who you're playing against. You just don't do it. Even if it's a friendly, I wouldn't do it. Um, unless I'm going to qualify. You need a rest or whatever. But, you know, like, it'd be great if he came on against... Uh, came on. It'd be great if he started against Qatar and got himself another two goals. Like, imagine how good a confidence that's going to do him. And going back to his club then, you know, he's going to be beaming with confidence. And hopefully he'll come into the next, you know, com- you know, next campaign, next few games, you know, ready to go against Ireland. But I'd certainly like to see him you know, start anyway. I think he has to, and I think, I think he will. You know, who else would he leave out? You know, really, you know, bring in ahead of him. I don't really see him leaving him out at all. Like you know, if he's fit, obviously at the time we recorded this video. But um, yeah, I'd have him there. I hope he will play there or even play as a striker. Um, why? I, I definitely think he'll be starting anyway. Who would you go up front? Yeah, look, I think this one was straightforward. I went for uh, either. Um, you know, him, yeah. I, I'd stick with him. Um, yeah, there's anything really wrong, you know. Um, I think if you can spend the position as a central striker, you know, the tall one, the hold up player, um, I think he could work on his solo play a bit more. Um, he is very good at it, but I just think he can do better. And I think if he has the likes of Abene and Robinson, that'll do the running for him. And him stay in the middle, I think that could cause teams problems going forward, you know. And then, you know, if you've thought already overlapping them, you know, you could have an overload going forward. Um, Sounds all great in theory, getting on paper. It's different doing it in the game, obviously. But I was a little good for him though the weekend, I have to say. McLean, as you said earlier, made a few good runs, but on one occasion, all he had to do was play it across to Ida, who was completely free. And McLean went for a shot that hit that it was never on for a shot. And um, that was just a lack of awareness from McLean's point of view. But uh, Ida was I, literally I waiting so, for a tap in. Do you remember that situation? I do, yeah, but yeah. I think, you know, that's a lot of ifs and buts. I think if mm. McLean had a squared at the him and Ida and Ida hadn't missed it, I think, oh, obviously, people, yeah. I think people were saying, oh, why can McLean just take on himself and have a shot? You know, I think it's one of them situations for myself. Mm. I, I that's guess said, you'd like good. to see Ida get the chance to miss it, if you get me, like, you know what I mean? Like, you'd, uh, yeah, I know what you mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Ball, if the ball's in his court, then miss it, you know, if he's in front, yeah. he should be getting He, he hasn't it, missed a lot of chances, not as if he's missing chances. He's not really getting chances. That's the main thing, isn't it, really, actually, in the games, really? Yeah, but um, I certainly think Ida will be our striker yeah. going forward unless, you know, unless he puts problems in centrally and puts someone else in the wing, which Connelly, I hope not. Really. Um, <laughs> he might go with Connolly left, midfield oh, left wing. Um, he has done it in the past and yeah. Connolly has been there at club level. He is, co- you know, he's comfortable there. Yeah. He could even develop into more of a winger than a striker because I don't really think he's a finisher just yet. He's anyway. not. I think he's got a lot more qualities in the wing. You know, he's he's good at getting in behind. He's good at kind of drifting in, 
bring the players away with him. He's got he's good got a good first touch. He's got a good acceleration. He's good at getting off with the ball. I think he's got a lot of qualities suited for a winger. Um, so it'd be interesting to see maybe even if he was to go with Robson as the striker and Connolly on the wing, that could work as well. But as for now, I'd be going with Ida as the main striker. You know, a, a tall target man. You know, he's he's done it for Ireland. He's, he's had a few good games for us. And Robinson beside him and Agbani on the other side. I think that'd be a, a good fun three from what we've had in that curve with we'll Bears anyway. Yeah, so basically you've gone for 4 3 3. You've gone for Bazuna and goal. You've gone for Doherty right back, Stevens left back. Egan and Duffy centre back. You've gone for in the centre midfield, you've gone for Horahan, if I can remember now, Cullen and McGrath. Mm-hmm. And then the wings, yeah. you went, you went for Ogbene, Robinson, and Ida up front. <laughs> That's it. That's not bad. That's, That's not it. bad, considering it's your team, not my team. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it'll be interesting how we go anyway. So uh, we we'll leave it there. And guys, let us know what you think of the comments. Let us know what your starting 11 would be. Who would you leave in? Who would you bring in? Um, what would you go do with the goalkeeper situation? That's an interesting one because we obviously have three good goalkeepers battling out there as well. And uh, subscribe if you're new, hit your bell notification button and let us know what you think as usual in the comments. I'll see you later. Thanks very much. Thank you, Daz. Brilliant. Oh, yeah.